Hey guys, so today we finally have something new and exciting to talk about with regards to Dodge, as it's kind of been a slow year on the Mopar news front. But it looks like Dodge will be bringing back an old nameplate to their lineup, the Hornet, in the form of a crossover or SUV type of vehicle. So let's get into this, we will be covering everything we know about this future 2023 Dodge Hornet. So first we'll look at the expectations that we had for a new midsize SUV, we'll also look at the Alfa Romeo Tonale, then we'll look at the 2023 Dodge Hornet specs, and also at the end we'll cover the Hornet nameplate history. So, let's get started. So I made a video in November of 2023 talking about the future of the Dodge Charger and Challenger, and at that time I said there were expectations for a new mid-sized Dodge Charger themed muscle utility vehicle for 2023 to replace the Dodge Journey. The Journey and Grand Caravan were phased out and 2020 was the last model year for each of them, and that left only three vehicles in the Dodge lineup the Charger, Challenger, and Durango. The Durango is doing well, getting all sorts of updates including a 2021 SRT Hellcat version, an SRT 392 version, and similar customization packages and options to the muscle cars. So right now that is basically Dodge's muscle SUV. But without the Journey or Grand Caravan, Dodge now lacks a smaller, mid-size utility vehicle since the Durango is a massive behemoth of a vehicle that has three rows, and not everybody wants such a large SUV. So that opens the door for a Dodge vehicle to fill in the gap left by the Journey. There were some renderings at the time floating around the internet, but while they are fun to look at and really cool, they are just artist sketches, so don't read into them too much. I also found many renderings of Hellcat wagons, including some that people actually built, but this is supposed to be an SUV type of vehicle and not a wagon, so that won't be coming to fruition. Around this time, it was thought that the future utility vehicle would be built on the Giorgio platform with rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. We also expected the Dodge SUV to be influenced by the styling of a Dodge Charger sedan, similar to the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E SUV, so we expected a similar front end and body style, including hood scoops, scallops, and performance fascias. Unfortunately, this Dodge Hornet doesn't look to be so exciting. This next part of the video will move on and focus on the Alfa Romeo Tonale vehicle. Why is this important? Well, now it looks like Dodge's next crossover vehicle will be a front-wheel drive offering based on this upcoming Alfa Romeo Tonale. This is according to website Passion Auto Italian, as they heard from unnamed sources. This is a luxury subcompact crossover, and Alfa Romeo unveiled this concept at the 2019 Geneva International Motor Show. Alfa Romeo said at the concept's reveal that the Tonale would be launched sometime before the end of 2022, and so far this is holding true, as we now know the date will be in the early part of 2022. The Tonale was supposed to be out in the second half of this year, 2021, but there have been several delays as the newly appointed Alfa CEO, Jean-Philippe Imperato, wanted some changes, including increased performance from a planned plug-in hybrid version. This delayed production by over three months, and Imperato was previously the head of Peugeot and joined Alfa Romeo in January 2021. As for some other facts about the Tonale, it rides on the FCA small wide platform, as does the Jeep Compass and Renegade. There is a plug-in hybrid powertrain expected, likely being a similar version to the Jeeps. It looks like there will be two versions of that plug-in hybrid, one with 190 horsepower and another with 240 horsepower. The system uses a 1.3 liter turbo engine, supported by a 60 horsepower electric motor on the rear axle. The electric range is rated at 30 miles, or 49 kilometers at a single charge, of the 11.4 kilowatt hour battery. The production will take place at the Stellantis plant in Pamigliano, Darco, and Naples, Italy. This Alpha crossover is forecasted to be a very important piece of the brand's future as it helps to increase sales in the US, as both 2019 and 2020 saw just over 18,000 vehicles moved, not very much at all. The Tonale will take on the likes of the Audi Q3, BMW X1 and X2, Mercedes Benz GLA class, Volvo XC40, and more. It simply needs to be done right to boost the Alfa Romeo brand and make for a successful American comeback. So now that we've covered the Tonale, we can look at the new Dodge SUV. This will also be built at the Pamigliano Darko plant alongside the Tonale. The Hornet should be offered in a few formats, with an internal combustion engine, mild hybrid electric vehicle, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicle offerings. The mild hybrid electric vehicle would feature a system similar to the current e-torque system that is found on the turbocharged 2.0-liter inline 4-cylinder, as well as on the Ram 1500 pickups. And the Hornet will be powered by a front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive system. 
As for the powertrains, the Hornet could share the Tonale's rumored new turbocharged 1.5 liter Firefly inline four cylinder, which is part of the global small engine family. I would think the 1.3 liter turbo engine is just too small for a Dodge vehicle in the North American market, although it does currently produce 177 horsepower and 210 pound feet of torque in the Jeep Renegade and Compass. The bigger turbocharged 2 liter inline four cylinder from the global medium engine family could also be thrown into the engine bay as it's already in some other Chrysler products. There isn't much else known about the Hornet, but production is slated to start around mid-2022 for that 2023 model release. Neither Dodge or Stellantis executives have commented on this matter thus far. However, on March 3rd of 2020, Motor Trend discovered two patent applications that FCA submitted, one for Dodge Hornet and the other for Hornet. The automaker requested to reserve both names in the US, Canada, and Mexico. So it looks like the Hornet will be available in all three of those markets. Also, we must note that a trademark filing is never a guarantee that the terms being protected will reach production. If the Hornet does actually get released for production, I wouldn't be expecting a luxury vehicle like the Alfa Romeo Tonale, but more of a fun and enjoyable vehicle to drive, something that shares its parts bin with a Jeep Compass. And don't expect a Hemi or Hellcat version either. So that's all the new information we have, and if you're still watching, now we can go over the history of the Hornet nameplate that the new SUV will be associated with. Originally, Dodge received the Hornet nameplate as a hand-me-down after parent company Chrysler Corporation purchased American Motors Corporation, or AMC, in 1987. AMC had used the name Hornet on a compact model built from the 1970 to 1977 model years, and it was available in several body styles all over the world, including Canada, the US, Australia, Costa Rica, Mexico, and South Africa. In 2006, Dodge revived the Hornet by creating a concept car for the 2006 Geneva Motor Show. This Hornet was Dodge's first attempt at making a car this small, and they thought that the cube-like design would appeal to younger buyers across the world, and especially in Europe. The starting price was slated to be very low, around $10,000 per vehicle, but Dodge wanted to try to find a partner to team up with on this car to maximize economies of scale, since they weren't going to be making very much profit at that price. As we can see on screen, the Hornet had a chunky design with the fender flares, and interestingly had a visible intercooler and fully functional hood scoop. Dodge tried to add a bit of sporty look here to appeal to the youth, and the concept showed off some interesting features like gold brake calipers, a rear diffuser, 19-inch wheels, a panoramic sunroof that was tinted in blue view color, and the car was painted in beryllium gray, topped off with light gray viper stripes. The doors were also rear hinged, opening to show that there were no B pillars to be found. As for the inside, the goal was to maximize interior space and accommodate both left hand and right hand drive depending on the different markets it was going to be sold in. The center stack looked fairly basic but did have a navigation screen poking out from the top. The instrument cluster moved as you adjusted the steering wheel. The driver's side door also had a cool feature where you could cool your drink. And the passenger side door had a pull out table, maybe for eating when stopped on a road trip or something like that. The thin seats were made of foam with built-in seat belt and aluminum framing, and the rear seats and passenger seats folded away into the ground for more space. As for the powertrain, this was front-wheel drive, and the engine in the front was a 1.6-liter four-cylinder supercharged Tri-Tech engine that pumped out 170 horsepower and 165 pound-feet of torque. This came with a six-speed manual, again to try to appeal to the European audience. I was surprised at how heavy the Hornet was, sitting at 3,100 pounds, but Dodge claimed it could do 0 to 60 at a tested time between 6.7 to 7.5 seconds and had a top speed of 130 miles per hour. That 06 Hornet concept was fully expected for production by 2010, but it would get dropped during the 2009 financial crisis. Once Chrysler merged with Fiat, the Hornet was then seen for testing in 2011, and the automotive world expected a 2013 Hornet model release, but that ended up being the Dodge Dart instead. And that was it for the Hornet until now. So that's it for this video guys, what do you think about the future Dodge Hornet? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.